diddle it in them British Strongman Podcast. So today we are going to talk about axle technique. So we've covered a little bit of axle technique at our seminar three weeks ago, Shane. I was going to cover it uh, last week, but we went into, we went ham on stone, didn't we? And had some uh, good yeah, feedback. Yeah, went, uh, went a bit too ham. Yeah, but I thought, I thought it was great because like... Um, you know, so someone messages messages you about oh what stone technique or whatever. Like now, I've got that in my head. Go and listen to the our latest episode about about stone technique, and then if you've got questions from that, and uh, I I just think it's a good good resource for us, and I think we should do the same for Axel today, whatever 10, 20 minutes or something, and um, because this is something that we we covered a little bit at the the coaching session that we did um it was it was very brief um and i didn't really want to i didn't really even really want to scratch the surface on it because there's so many different variations that you can do on axel you know like say we can talk about jerks push presses strict presses different cleans belt cleans power cleans mixed grip um so i just thought we could go, go into a little bit more depth today um with the with the axle, so scenario is you've got a you've got a big um, well let's talk about light lightweight strongman first so under nineties under eighties under sixty three girls usually you're going to be able to belt clean and belt clean and press belt clean and jerk or whatever so what how would you how would you teach somebody to to start off with no, in fact, forget how how you teach somebody. What 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 are the what are the cues that you see that that or oh, common errors that you see with people with Axel? Is it the press? Is it the clean? Is it the what is it? Well, I think that you should have two two go to techniques on Axel, and a lot of people have just the one. So. I think your max technique should be different to like your rep technique. Um, so I think practice, like knowing what what you not knowing what you're training for, and understanding what techniques going to get you the most points in the event, and making sure you apply that instead of just having like this is how I do axel, and oh it's for reps, so I'm just going to do that for reps. Because obviously, let's say you do a let's say you do a belt clean with a mixed grip, and then you pull it into a rack position, and then you do a split jerk. That's going to take a lot longer than say double overhanding it, getting a nice bounce off your belt, and then push pressing or power jerking it. Um, so I think making sure you've got like, like you mentioned about all the different techniques that you can use, you know, pra- practice them. You know, get get good at them and decide which is the the best for for you, and then you can apply the technique to your upcoming competition. So I think that's probably the. I mean, obviously, I can go into technique stuff as well. People make mistake mistakes on, but I think the biggest mistake I see is just having one set way of doing it, uh, no freedom then to adjust. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's a great point. Um, and I think I think it's one of those exercises. There are so many variations that, um, and it's so so simple to put into to a program um, and acquire skill if you're open minded. Like I like getting people to do, like say whatever they're whatever they're most confident with. To like say it might be a, it might be a continental clean and push press, or it might be power clean and. Push push jerk or whatever get them to train that on the the, on the like kind of main overhead day or whatever uh, as the main session and then I like putting something where so so they feel like they're they're actually getting better at at what they're already confident with if you will and then um, and then basically have like a you could have like another day like say for instance I like putting overhead skill work after deadlifts on like kind of my, my max effort lower body session where I just like just really 
play around with different techniques and work work on efficiency. Um, the thing with, with with Axel as well, if you get like a if you get like a setup where you can you've got bumper plates and a platform or bumper plates and and uh, drop pads, um, like it's amazing how much volume you can accumulate. And like as long as you eliminate the eccentric, you can accumulate loads of volume, loads of practice, and it just doesn't cost you anything. If anything, it like if you get the if you get the intensities right, it, it'll actually help you with your recovery because you're just getting you getting your body generally moving uh, really explosively. So, say for instance, like um, I, I get quite a few few people messaging me asking about like oh. Uh, uh, I wish I could split jerk or I wish I could do power jerk. Um, and I'm like saying, why, why, why don't you give it a try? Why don't you, instead of wishing, why don't, why don't you go and give it a try? Go and give it a try here. And then I'll, I'll get them to do it, at, like say, after the kind of deadlift session or whatever, I'll get them to do, like say, right, empty bar, do 10 sets of three. Um, just basically trying to catch in a split stance with the, if, you, if they want to try to split your feet even, pretty even apart, uh, three second pause in the split position, um, and do ten sets of three with an empty bar, uh, with the with the goal getting more more um, more consistent with the, the stability and the balance as you go along the in the set. That, the thing that I always remind people of as well is you don't need to have. Uh, absolutely perfect Olympic split jerk no. to put a little bit more weight over your head. And uh, yeah. once, once you get to that point where you're putting a little bit more weight over your head, even if your technique looks a bit shoddy, you know, over time, it's going to get better and better and better, but it could still be a valid technique to use, even if it isn't fully polished yet. Because um, I've seen people put 10 kilo on their axle with a shoddy split jerk. Uh, so it doesn't matter, does it? If you if, if you get the if you get the points, if you get the the weight, you're good. And then over time, because these things do take a lot a lot of time to master, don't they? But I don't think they take a lot of time to see results in terms of kilos, personally. Yeah, I completely agree, and I think I think it's all about the um, getting the getting your expectation right and the mindset right behind it. And like, I think too many people try it, and then they feel like a twat. And because um, they're comparing themselves to like uh, an Olympic weightlifter, for instance, whereas whereas actually, don't don't compare yourself to an Olympic weightlifter. Con compare yourself to, say, for instance, someone like Rob Kearney, for instance, like, um, like it, I, I think he's got very good. It's almost like a split press kind of thing. Um, yeah, like it's clear to me that it's it, it's not like from a He's not like from a weightlifting background, if you will. He's like he's just like refined this kind of more efficient way to do this kind of press it in a kind of explosive split stance that I think a lot of people could. Yep. Yes, it is. Yeah. All oh, right. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Oh shit! I've just dropped my uh, <laughs> my COVID card. Oh, but, uh, fuck it up. Right, go on, Shane. Talk, just uh, talk, talk for another. Yeah. Oh, God, I fucked that up. Um, so, but basically, with, with the um, the what I'm saying, it, 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 yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like, it doesn't like don't don't, don't try and copy an Olympic weightlifter, and don't base your. And another thing as well, like people just think, oh, I've I've been trying it for an hour, and I just can't. I just can't get it as good as these people that you see on the Olympics. Well, you're not going to be able to. It's, thank you very much. Cheers. Like, uh, it takes absolutely year, thousands and thousands of hours to do to do that. But like Shane said, you can you can if you set your expectations appropriately, you can actually get 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 some easy gains in terms of kilos on the bar by um by um by doing it and not and not trying to be perfect there's a few guys that i coach who would who would who, who do it who like split jerk and it's more like a kind of 
Um, well, in fact, there's a, there's a guy called, do you follow him? Honey Badger, he's called Mark Cummins. Yeah, he's, I he, he, he's, he's done great with it, actually, because like he was he was kind of frustrated. He, he was like a push press purist, like, and then a few people like got like a bit ahead of him on like say axe or whatever. And then he was like, "Oh fuck it, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna give it a go." And uh, uh, I've had a go at these split jerks. They're fucking awful. I can get a couple more kilos on the bar. And then he he stuck with it. Like credit to him, he stuck with it. And he got to that point where he was like, "If I do a perfect, perfect push press, I can." I can do like say one thirty ish or whatever, or he can. But everything has to be perfect, and it looks beautiful when he does it. But he does this kind of mongy, like look like he's going to break the inside of his knee, kind of split, like he's having a, I don't know, like he doesn't look well when he does it. And um, but but he can just pop one thirties up for fun, right? So then he's kind of got to the point in his head where he was like, right, well, this technique isn't pretty. I'm not proud of it. I do prefer to push press. But even with this kind of, like, shitty technique, it's going up so much easier. So what, what he's done now, what he's done for the last couple of months is he's kind of bought into it and he's said, right, well, if with shit technique, I'm getting a couple more kilos on, on it there. What, what's going to happen if I just keep at it and look to refine it and work on my footwork, get my feet out a little bit wider, doing like say some lower weight drills and stuff. And he's refined it a lot and he, he does it now. And it's a lot, not only more consistent, but it, it does, it looks like it's going to be more, much more scalable to, to much bigger weights. And at the same time as well, by the way, like um, what a lot of people don't, <clears throat> A lot of people think about jerks and stuff. They're like, oh, well, I just want to get my raw pressing strength up. Like, he's, he's an example of somebody who's improved with all the split jerking kind of stuff on the axle. And at the same time, like, he's, he push presses the log. He doesn't do jerks with the log. Uh, but, but, like, he's, he's, hitting, he's hit a load of, like, log push press BBs recently. Like, they've, they've gone up at the same time. Like, so... Yeah, I think split jerking definitely helps uh, with your pressing. Just, I think just having that weight over your head and uh, so you know, obviously a lot of the times with a dodgy split jerk, there's a little bit of a press out, and yeah. uh, you know all the stabilising, uh, you know all the stability gains you're going to get having them, you know, maximal weights overhead. I think allows you to get like a more stable pressing line anyway. So. Obviously, I've done a lot of split jerks in my time, and I always thought that when whenever I was popping big weight over me, I'd be split jerks. I always felt the most stable when I was doing log or something. As soon as it was overhead, it was just like it was just like nothing because I was used to having 20, 30 kilo more there. Um, so it's great. But anyway, we'll go back to we're just chatting about fucking split jerks now. We'll go back to this axle. So Obviously, the kind of, I guess there's not too many mistakes you can make when you're actually getting it to your belt. Uh, you don't want to, if we start from the ground up, you don't want to be rowing it. And I think that's that's a common thing I was told, you know, back in the day was an over row it onto your, uh, onto your belt. Um, yeah. So you don't want to do that, guys. You want to, you want to use as much of the hips as possible to pop the bar and I don't think I don't know if you agree Josh but I don't think you should aim for your belt I think you should just try and pop it as high as possible and if you go above it it'll it'll slide down and land on your belt anyway I think if you aim for your belt you can sometimes you know not quite get the height and uh, end up slipping off so I prefer to teach people to pop high I kind of agree with that but then I I, I disagree a little bit because it, it's like um, if you if you're not willing to practice it that much, then I completely agree with Shane, which is what a lot of people do. They'll do the pressing from the rack, they'll do whatever, and they'll just save their axle training until they've got it comp. 
And if you if you train like that, then yeah, definitely do what Shane said. And just if anything, aim past the belt, and then you know at least uh, it's gonna it it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna drop down. You, you're less likely to fall short. Whereas if you if you've got the facility to practice it quite a bit, it's a bit like stones, isn't it? Like if you think that as you as you get more practice with stones, you don't need to clear the lip as high. You actually, it's actually more efficient to once you've got that perfect height to slide it to slide it on and receive, and it's going to be a lot more energy efficient. Blah 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 blah. blah. Um, and then you've got less like it. Like if you if you get used to timing it, so you so you've just got the perfect amount of height onto the belt, it's going to be um, it's going to feel like the weight's crashing down on you a lot less, which is going to be a lot more efficient. But you're only going to get better at that if you if you if you're open to practicing the skill frequently. Um, it's exact on rep event. I'll aim for my belt. Yeah, but if it's a max. I'm just fucking trying Launching. to check it out. Yeah, 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 I get that. Because uh, obviously you, you, you don't want to... Yeah, on, on a rep event, guys, you don't... Because obviously you, you, on a rep event, we'll turn on your strength level, obviously. You, if you pull it as high as you can, you might be pulling it, you know, too, too high. But I was kind of thinking from a, a term of uh, when it gets to them top-end weights, I'm just trying to pull it as high as possible. Because the chances are it's only going to go a tiny bit over the belt anyway. Yeah. Um, if if it's uh, like if I had like ninety kilo for reps or something, I wouldn't be uh, be doing that because I'd probably be fucking powerful. Playing up power cleaning it by accident. <laughs> but um, yeah. once you've actually got on your belt though, the same rule applies for everyone, which is when you're dipping to extend and pop the axle into your rack position, you need to apply the same mechanics that you do on like uh, a push press where you, you'd keep a yeah. vertical torso, yeah, open up at the hip and try and extend and pull the bar vertically. And um, even on a belly clean, if, if you're not, if you're not allowed to use a belt, it's a lot harder on a, on a belly clean because you tend to end up pushed back into a bit of extension to actually rest the uh, axle. But I, I practiced belly cleaning for quite a while and I got really good at it actually. And um, I was able to maintain a vertical torso after I learned the best position to put the barbell in. When I was in the wrong position, I was leaning back a lot uh, yeah. to, or else the bar would slip. And I thought, I kept telling myself back then, oh, it's because you're light, you don't have a big belly like these opens and this, it just slides yeah. down and all this. But after a good couple of weeks of practice, I did find that I was able to find, a, I found a position and I was able to stick to those rules of vertical torso and pop the bar vertically. So I think you can still achieve it on a belly clean. I just think for lightweights, it's, it's quite hard. And it just takes a lot more practice. So, in my opinion, if you were allowed to belt clean, personally, I would just stick with belt cleaning because I don't think, unless you're planning to at some stage go to opens where you're not allowed to, I don't know if there's that much benefit to be gained from learning that skill, to be honest with you. Yeah. What do you think? I think... Um... Going back to the the point where you were saying about popping it up to, so uh, you were saying popping it up to the belt, so we should be popping it up to whichever rack position that you're deciding that you're going to use. So obviously, if you if you pop into the belt, pop into the belt. But if you're if you're pop, if you're doing the continental clean or belly clean or whatever, make sure that you pop into that exact spot and you know exactly where it is. You're not just hoping. Um, and I would say be consistent with it, like uh, be consistent with that that consistent rack position. So you're not like, say, for instance, some people get it right. What, what, what do you think, actually, Shane? You see some people like popping it up really high. And then when they get tired, they, they don't pop it up quite as high. Like, would you say do that or would you say like 
be consistent with the the best position, you know, all yeah, the way so through. For me, on the continental, I found I had to get it right high under my chest, right, uh, or else I couldn't maintain <clears> a vertical torso on the dip. It just, but I didn't have a big enough belly, and if I jammed it like into my ribs at the top. Yeah, uh, I found it stays still, and I can apply force, but it's obviously quite high. So yeah. when I was do, when I was doing it, obviously I'm trying to aim for there, but I was what I was what I was training for at the time was actually a 150 for reps in an open comp that I was doing. Um, and the first rep of 150, I could always pop there pretty consistently, but then the second rep, it, I just couldn't get it there, so I'd have to hit it lower, end up bouncing it to the position and then I could pop but what I found was that bouncing was also a skill so I had like yeah. I had like rack positions that felt stable lower down as well if that makes sense so I'm almost like popping up a ladder and as long as I hit the positions it felt all right if I missed them it just ended up becoming this big mongy thing where I'm bouncing an axle up my belly so I definitely think there's a skill to getting it in that position, but it's so, I think with the belly clean, it's so individual as to like your, well, your structure around your fucking stomach as to where it's going to be most comfortable to sit that mm. you're just going to have to like, it's just gonna have to practice, like you say, and, and find out where that is and make sure you get there every, every time. Yeah. So um, I think the the thing that stays constant, is, whether people realise it or not, is like wherever your rack position is, whether it's a high belly clean, low belly clean, whether it's a belt clean, like if you use the same principles that we've said about the push press before, uh, when you're doing it with a log or an axle or whatever, and if you look at your videos from the sides and you pause in your rack position, and if you feel like, say, it's on your belt or it's on your belly but it just feels like it's pulling forward then what it what it probably means is that you you need to um you need to kind of soften your knees a little bit allow your knees to track forward and like let your hips let you so so your hips can move somewhere so you so therefore you you kind of wherever it is drops lower and a little bit be behind basically you want it in the rack you want the bar resting so you draw the straight line down and you're going through mid four yeah yeah would you would you agree so yeah. um so you'll probably probably most people probably find with the continental clean that they just that to find that position that kind of weightless rack position that we talk about um it's a little bit easier to find with the belt because you can just kind of break it your knees like rest it Put the belt low, rest you, rest you, rest it on the belt. Soften your knees, and you're almost there in this kind of nice upright position that feels similar to your kind of push press dip. Whereas with a um, with, with a continental clean or a belly clean, probably going to have to if you sit similar similar size to me or whatever, you're probably going to have to drop. Um, Break at the knees a lot, a lot more, and um, to allow yourself to thrust forward at the hips to sit, sit with the shoulders a little bit further back behind the bar. Does that make any sense, Shane? Can you yeah, translate that? Yeah, you, on, on the on the axle belly clean, shoulders are behind. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Shoulders yeah. have to be behind the bar a little bit more to bring that to bring the object over mid foot, basically. Yeah, and that's what I was saying about how. If you, the, the better you get at it, the less, if you're still going to have to be behind, but the less behind you'll be. That's what I found. Because when I first was doing it, I was leaning really far back and I was too far behind. So I couldn't really apply any force into the extension to get it into my front rack. Whereas as I got better at it, my shoulders were getting closer to the bar, which meant my hips could open up a little bit. And then um, I was able to generate a lot, more, a lot more force. But I think with the belly clean, if you're a bigger dude, it's going to be a little easier because you can comfortably sit it on your belly and think, oh, it's stable. 
Whereas if you've got a bit of a flat stomach, you're having to lean back to, to push it out more and create something. Um, yeah. But I don't no, think, I, a lot of people say it's impossible for lightweight. I don't think it's impossible at all. I think it's, uh, just, no. just, I think it's a bit pointless because what's the point when you can just belt clean? But um, yeah. Yeah, I think you can definitely do it. Yeah. And um, like mechanically, if you think about it, um, if you've got if you've got a big big belly, that's going to be really helpful for you because it, it's going to that mass at the front of your your body is going to act as like a counterbalance that is going to allow you to keep. Basically, if you right, if we say we have to put say you have to put your shoulders right behind the bar on the on the belly clean in order to keep balanced in order to keep the weight over mid-foot without falling over. Do you agree, Shane? Yeah. Yeah. So if you've got, like, say, say a big belly that's protruding, that, or a belly that's protruding protruding out a little bit, that when you stand up, that, that weight, that mass it is in front of mid-foot, what you're going to be able to, what you're going to be able to do is, is going to be able to, in the rack position, be you're gonna you're gonna be a lot more uh, balanced with your shoulders forward, shoulders a little bit more forward than someone with a flatter tummy who has to go who has to lean back more. Does that make any sense? I can picture what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm um, picturing Jim Gilbert. <laughs> you know, so it's all, almost like uh, like say for instance. Um, if, if you're learning, if you're learning how to squat, right? Easiest way to learn how to squat for a beginner is to goblet squat. Would you agree, Shane? Yes. Just just grab like a fucking front twenty loaded. kilo, yeah, tw- twenty kilo plate, something like that, held in front, and you're going to be able to squat because you're going to be able to keep everything balanced, and, and it's going to act as a counterbalance as you as you squat down. So I'm so my theory is. But it's a similar principle with the the the, the um, kind of continental clean, and why it's advantageous. It's not just because you've got this mass, this power belly, as people talk about it. This this mass to aim for, it's actually giving you that uh, that counterbalance when you when when the belt when it when you're in the rack position. That's my theory, anyway. Um, what do you think, Shane? I mean, I've never been that big, so I can't say for definite. But I'd imagine when I picture it, I imagine that is what what it feels like. Once you've uh, you give a good cue, though, I just remembered uh, a couple of weeks ago on the axle uh, on the belly clean. I can't remember what the fuck it was. I think it was to point your elbows to the ceiling. Was it once the uh, axle is on your belt? Is that what you? Um, or put, point the elbows to the end of the bar caps. Elbows to the end of the bar caps. Yeah, so it's getting you out of that kind of... Uh, so it's getting the, the shoulders a little bit more internally rotated. So when you drive up on the the second phase of the clean, when you turn it over to land it in the rack, like the turnover, you can keep it a lot closer and you can move the bar vertically rather than swinging out in front. Because that that's like that's like massive, massive error that you see. You know, the, the, there's guys probably listening to this who've got who are like frustrated with axle because they've got like a oh yeah I'm really really strong at push pressing from the rack with the barbell or whatever, but then I'm uh, the then uh, I struggle with the clean or whatever, and you see that a lot of people who aren't well practiced at the cleans, who are strong in their upper body, who are used to got a pretty big deadlift so they're used to tightening the lats and like kind of screwing back their armpits see people do this in the clean with their elbows pointing back and then if you've got the so ne- so anybody listening to this next time you use the next time you do a continental clean or a belt clean just check your elbow position are your elbows pointing back behind the bar and if they're pointing backwards to the wall behind you then as you drive up the bar is going to loop and it's going to be you're giving yourself a really difficult task of 
um, to move the move the bar vertically. So therefore, the bar is going to loop in front, and then it's going to come and crash on you and feel like it's forcing you backwards. And the big error that you see is people receive it in the uh, in the rack position and then take a couple of steps back, or the weight goes onto the heels. Whereas you watch somebody who's really efficient at cleaning, and it will just it will just be a really efficient transition where it looks it looks weightless for a split second and feels weightless for a split second if you move that bar vertically um, and then kind of move around the bar. So the bar isn't moving forwards or backwards at all. That, that's, a, that's kind of the biggest general tip I'd give on axle would be all the, all the kind of positions, keep the bar as close as possible and try and move it uh, from each of the positions in a, in a straight line as close to vertical as possible. And um, and th that that's a way to fix that's a way to fix it from the from the belly or the belt to the shoulders is by if you point your elbows to the end of the bar cap instead of letting them point behind you, then it's going to feel like you're in a fucking weird, uncomfortable position for your shoulders at first and alien. But it's going to give you at it's going to at least give you the opportunity to move the bar vertically. And uh, another cue that I give to people linked with this is imagine you're trying to scrape your sternum on the way up um, after the drive you're driving your elbows up towards the ceiling scraping your sternum before the turnover rather than you see a lot of people looping out in front and then crashing on the collarbone are you with me Shane? Yeah a lot of people um, miss they pop they can pop the axle quite powerfully from the belt yeah, and then, like you say, they they miss that turnover point, don't they? Yeah, um, and that cue of getting the shoulders in line with the or pointing towards the bar caps. Yeah, elbows towards the bar caps. Yeah, yeah. I've I've told a few people that, and it's helped them with that. But also, what I've noticed is fucking sixty percent of strong men have terrible internal rotation mobility so yeah. if you struggle to even get anywhere near that position do yeah. some mobilization prior and then make it a habit that you're going to try and get in that position every time you clean so that you can yeah. acquire that mobility over time uh, instead of just going oh, i can't do it there's no point you know just do yeah. a little bit of mobility try get as far as you can try and go a fucking degree further every time you do axle and eventually you'll you'll be there yeah and by the way, this is one of those. Um, this isn't one of those generic go and do mobility drills. This is like if you listen to to Shane what he said there, and you basically go and do a few, go and do a set of cleans, and then try and get this elbow towards the bar cap position, and then struggle with it in terms of if you feel like you just can't achieve that position because of mobility, then go and do some YouTube, some uh, shoulder internal rotation stretches. Put like two minutes on the clock, do two minutes worth of stretches and then go and retest and then see what a difference it makes. And you, you'll be able to achieve a, bit, a better position and it will just feel easier. So it's one of those things where um, like I, I hate giving people general mobility shit, but this is something where you can be really specific to a problem. And it's just like, a lot of people will just get instant success and it'll just feel so much better. And another thing for a lot of people to to feel this uh, better turnover position is um, for the for the for the sake of skill acquisition at least, like di ditch your elbow sleeves for some of your sessions for for the sake of the cleans, and at least because you'll be able to because your elbow sleeves are making it even harder to get that internally rotated position. Um, so, again, this could be like, say, you do your main do your main day on your overhead day or whatever, and then just have a bit of a piss about on on uh, on, on another day with none of your supportive equipment, and just have a bit of a play with these cues. Have a have a bit of a play with the cues on there. So the pop up to the belt or the belly, trying to find that position where it feels comfortable in the rack position. You're not just blagging it. You're not just, if it feels like it's sliding off, 
you re- you haven't found the position yet. Yeah. So um, and then from that from that rep position to the shoulder to the rep position before you press it, have a go at pointing the elbows out towards the end of the bar caps, and then as you drive up, elbows up, driving the elbows up towards the ceiling, move that bar in a vertical path uh, before you turn it over, and then and then obviously when you get to the push press or the jerk or whatever. Just use the use the same principles. Won't we'll, we'll go into jerking and stuff now, um, but you can see that like how many people have you got instant success with Shane just by getting them to improve the dip and making it vertical? It's just fucking mad, isn't it? Yeah, and also it's like instant, um, that instant as well. You can get if you have a good dip, you can get more volume in because. Yeah. The amount of people that I see that like, oh, my fucking knees are on push press. And I understand that, you know, it's it's worse for you. It's dynamic, so it's going to be a little worse for it. But if you're, a lot of people dip just by tracking the knee forward and they're not opening the hip up. And that just yeah. puts so much stress on the knee. So if you're doing five by five push press or seven by five push press, whatever, and every rep is just uh, knees, 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 then you're going to struggle to recover and do, you know, more work later in the week. Whereas if you get your dip right, you're going to have a, I mean, you might, your knees might still hurt. I'm not going to say it's going to fix it, but it's going to be a lot less stress through them, which means that you might be able to, you know, spend a bit more time on that skill session that Josh is talking about uh, after your heavy work. Whereas you don't want to be going into that skill session thinking my knees are going to explode from my last push press session, do you? And um, last so little thing, thing. Position's, always, positions always the most important in my opinion. It gets it carries over to so much stuff, not just the kilos, but just the whole week. It it, it can change the whole week. Yeah. So last last little thing on that to to um to fix what you've just said about people who who uh, suffer with the knees on the dip and stuff. Um, this is something that I used to struggle with. Um, I used to ju- I used to just have to manage my volume with all jerks and push presses and stuff because my knee because of like patella tendinopathy or tendonitis or whatever your typical blah 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 that everyone moans about. Um, whereas actually working on obviously getting stronger and stuff generally like front squats have helped me, um, but. But something that, that I swear by are jerk dips. I really, really like them and find them beneficial. And it's just basically getting it, getting away in the rack position and then just just dip, just dipping with just dipping with it and, and learning how to dip. And those those guys that are that are like tracking the knees forward will soon get found out on jerk dips. They'll just be in agony. So they'll be forced to open up the open up the knees a little bit be stable with the feet externally rotate at the hip keep the foot stable without collapsing in blah 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 and then not only will they find that position but then they'll build up conditioning in that position and they get better at that and they learn how to do that pain free they go and do all the volume on the push presses and it just feels fucking amazing so in terms of programming what where I'd put that in would be um maybe on your like on your overhead day maybe i i'm a fan of front loaded squats front squat searches, whatever um but but doing doing jerk dips say starting at say three sets of five at around 90 percent of your max overhead so if you're a so if you put if you're a 150 push presser jerker do um Try three sets of five, one thirty-five, and just do that as a little, little three or four week block. It won't, it won't cost you much in terms of energy. It'll be re- pretty, it'll be really easy, but you'll just have like a small margin for error where you feel like, oh shit, if I do that slightly wrong, my fucking knee hurts. Whereas if you just do like a little four week block of the same weight, three sets of five, at, three to four sets of five at that. 90, 90 to 100% range and just keep the weight you say and just aim to week one try and find a position that doesn't hurt 
week to be more confident in the uh, that you can do it in the position that doesn't hurt and be a bit more positive with the dip so you're not going down shitting yourself doing like a slow eccentric thinking it's going to hurt like committing to the position a little bit more week three do the same weight but, but be be a little bit faster on the eccentric and try and get a bit more height on the concentric and then week four try and just try and make it elastic and almost jumping up and down and catching it in the in the rack position and if people do, if if um yeah if you if you if you have sore knees on the day you find it generally harder to recover from generally hard to recover from try this protocol see if it helps and you could and try, try, try that with some of your guys Shane. it's uh absolutely brilliant and brilliant for um re, you can use it to improve uh rack position as well you know like uh get them to do it in a kind of push press front rack position I'm trying to get them to encourage that get, get yeah. the general rack position better I used to use jerk dips a lot when I coached more ollie lifters, but I've gone away from them, to be honest, but be a good idea to add them, add them back in, actually, because Axel's cropping up in a few comps recently, so moving away from log. Yeah. Right, you're happy with that then, Shane? Yeah, spot on. See you later, mate. I've just been jabbed. See you, mate. See you, mate. Oh, COVID jab, by the way. COVID jab. All right, bye-bye. <laughs>